So here we have a function that we can think of as having three inputs and one output because we have uh, three numbers that go in, x, y, and z, and from those three numbers we're able to figure out the output, this fourth number, w. We can't look at the graph of this because the graph requires looking at inputs and outputs together, and that would require four dimensions, which is hard for us to visualize. So instead what we'll do is, is, do, uh, is look at level sets. This time though, level sets, instead of being curves, like with a function from r2 to r1, level sets are going to be surfaces. So we'll just look at different values of w and all the inputs that lead to that, that particular value. So let's see, it wouldn't make sense for us to use w, have w be a negative number because x squared plus y squared plus z squared has to be at least zero. So let's look at level sets with w equals zero and then we could go up to maybe w equals one, w equals two, w equals three. So if w equals zero, we have x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals zero which is just a single point, right? The only way that these three non-negative numbers could add to be zero would be if they were all zero. So we just have this single point at the origin. Okay, and then when w equals one, we have x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals one, which is a sphere of radius one. So let me just draw a sphere of radius one centered at the origin here. There's our sphere. So here's w equals zero and the w equals one level set is a sphere around that. Now we get a sphere of radius two, if w is two. Oh, it's not, not radius two, radius square root of two, right? So it's actually closer in. Its radius is 1.4 versus the previous one that had a radius of, of straight one. So this sphere is closer. And then x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals three, that's, that's a sphere of radius root three, so the next sphere out is closer to that sphere as well. So we can see, we can tell a few things, even though we can't visualize the graph of this function, we can tell a few things about this function. We can tell that um, since level sets are spheres, what you want to do to grow as fast as possible is to go up perpendicular those level sets, which would be heading straight away from the origin. So. Um, the other thing that we can tell is the further we go out, the faster uh, we're going to see that value of w increase. So if we were to, if we were to be um, trying to trying to move through input space to try to make w as big as possible, for, we would we would try to head out from the origin as quickly as we could, and we would see that that uh, these level sets start getting closer and closer together. Let's do it in Maple so that we have maybe a cleaner or nicer visualization. So going over to Maple, we could use um, implicit plot 3D to do this, um, to, to plot these. It's going to be a little bit rough, so it might be nicer to parameterize. So let's spell implicit plot 3D, implicit plot 3D. Um, see, our first level set was x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 1. And we were interested in spheres up to radius root 3. So if I just kind of uh, allow x, y, and z to lie in a box with uh, kind of centered at the origin, um, going out as far as 2 left or right, up and down, and side to side, then, then that should do it. Let's check our little. OK, there's one level set. All right. Now, that should technically be a sphere, right? But what's happening in Maple is it is um, going throughout this region that I specified and searching for solutions. And so it may not be as smooth as you might like when you when you draw those. Let's see. So what we want to do is to make a bunch of those. So I'm going to copy what we had and then paste several. We'll call this P1. So I'll do P1 just for plot one. That's just a name I made up and suppress the output, so change these semicolons to colons. And let's see, I can do at least a couple more. Um, the two level set and the three level set. No, we had the zero level set. That wouldn't be so interesting. Why don't I do the four level set? That will fit inside there. Once you have all your plots created, then just use display to show them all together. 
Okay, I can't see much because it's all inside that final level set, the last, the one that had radius four, that biggest one. What I might try doing is to kind of make these plots have different styles. So maybe on the outside one, I'll just I'll just show the the contours on that plot. But on the one inside of that, maybe I'll just do a wireframe and. The one inside of that, hmm, well, not much. Maybe I'll have to do wireframe again so you can kind of see through it to the next one in. And let's see. Oh, actually, because of the order I did these, let me do this one as a wireframe as well. This is The second one is actually the innermost one. I'll just make that one kind of solid. I like the way the patch no grid looks. This is a particular style choice. Okay, now we can see the level sets we have. Um, the outer one I just did is contours. Um, and then the inner, the next two in I did is wireframes and then the, the one on the inside was, was solid. Hmm, well, that's pretty, <laughs> pretty messy, but you get the sense of those nested spheres that form the level sets of this function. Let's do another one. Let's look at the level surfaces of this now. Um, since we're talking about level surfaces, we must be talking about a function with three inputs and one output, right? Because that's where that's how the level sets could be surfaces. Um, but that just must mean that y just doesn't show up. So there's a third variable, but it doesn't make an appearance. Oh, that's okay. Let's think about what our level sets are. Um, we can think about various values of w, maybe w equals negative 2, w equals negative 1, w equals 0, w equals 1, and w equals 2. And let's see, if w equals negative 2, then we have z equals negative x squared minus 2. Now if there wasn't a y, that would just be um, a parabola, right? So a parabola down 2 here in the xz plane, but because there's a y that's free, it actually makes a parabolic cylinder here. So my lowest level set that I've created so far is um, sort of a, an upside down half pipe. Okay, let's see. Now if uh, w equals negative 1, we get z equals negative x squared minus 1, or if w equals 0, we get z equals negative x squared. All of these are parabolic cylinders. And what's happening when we add the 1 is that's just shifting us up 1 in the z direction. z equals negative x squared plus 2. So what we have basically is kind of a stack of these parabolic cylinders, right? And those form the level sets. They keep moving up by the same amount. So we say, well, what does that help you know about the function? Well, it gives you a sense of, we're just looking at the inputs to the function, right? But the important thing may be that you can think of it telling you is, is if you're on one level set, the fastest way to get to a higher level is to go perpendicular to that level set, right? Heading for the next level set up. And so that, that tells you sort of the direction of steepest ascent or steepest increase of W is going to be perpendicular to um, the, these um, parabolic cylinders. Let's uh, go ahead and graph them really quick. Um, since in this case, we can we we can we were able to get these surfaces we were able to solve for z as a function of x or technically as a function of x and y it's just y didn't appear then instead of having to use um, implicit plot we can just use plot 3d so plot 3d and the equation is negative x squared minus 2 and let's let x go from negative 2 to 2 and then we'll let y go from well I better go Oh, that's okay. We'll let y go from negative 2 to 2, and that will create one of our parabolic cylinders. Now let's put them together so we can get them sort of nested. I'm going to set up so I suppress the output, and I'm going to give these plots their own names. So we'll have plot 1, plot 2. Um, oops, I keep running it on accident. And to get a new line, you have to hold down Shift and hit Enter. And I was just forgetting to hold down shift. So plot two, plot three, plot four, plot five. 
And what happened on these was we got first x squared, negative x squared minus 2, then negative x squared minus 1, then just plain negative x squared, and negative x squared plus 1, and negative x squared plus 2. Once you've created all your plots, then just display them together. So the command is display, and then list the names that you've given to your particular plots. So I named my plots P3 through P5, so we can graph them here. And we see what we get is, yeah, our stack of nested parabolic cylinders.